Hello. Good evening and good day, everyone. Welcome to my IV Offenses. I'm very happy and excited to be here with all of you. Thank you already for joining. I hope you had a great day or you are just starting your day as Christina is. Uh, thank you so much, Christina. It's lovely to have you here. How are you feeling tonight? I'm feeling good and excited about this opportunity to be joining with all of you today. So um, hopefully I can help you with some answers in, um, on our webinar. Thank you so much. Indeed, this is a first webinar with you, and I'm very excited to have you here as our presenter. As you all know, topic today is how to choose your sperm donor, and we have an expert on that, of course. Uh, Christina Garcia, as you can see her, she is the manager at Cryobank, Fairfax Cryobank, of course, and she is talking to us from Pasadena, California. So mm -hmm. it's amazing. It's always amazing for me. It's 7 p.m. in the UK. It's uh, 11 a.m. <laughs> at your yeah. place, right? Right now. So yep. it's always <laughs> amazing still. Uh, but I'm glad you were able to join us tonight. And uh, I'm sure it's going to be useful for you. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, my IVF census is a part of our European, a part of European Fertility Society, which has been brought to you, all the patients, as we want to support you, educate you with the webinars. But there are also other activities that we are proud to represent. So we are here. We know that the um, IVF journey can be difficult and we are simply trying to uh, help out as much as we can, of course. And I am also uh, very proud to say that uh, Fairfax Cryobank is also our uh, partner sponsor. So thank you um, for supporting our initiative uh, as well. And we are definitely happy and excited to be able to cooperate with you. Uh, and I hope that it's going to be just as fruitful as today's webinar, of course. And mm -hmm. um, let me briefly tell you, we will start with Christina's presentation on our topic. And afterwards, there will be time for your questions. So remember, you can just put those in the chat section. Christina will definitely help you out with those uh, after her presentation. So don't hesitate. Anything that you have in mind, go ahead ask and uh, we want to definitely make sure to that you will get some answers tonight um, and I guess that will be it from me I believe we can start with the presentation as long as you're ready Christina yeah I'm ready <laughs> happy to hear that then of course uh, thank you so much and let's go ahead all right let's do this okay and so presentation. Here we go. All right, everyone. So again, my name is Christina Garcia. I am the cryobank manager for Fairfax Cryobank. I have been in the industry for almost 14 years now, and I started off uh, with Pacific Reproductive Services and Fairfax Cryobank acquired PRS in 2016, so I'm so happy to still be joining and helping all of our clients' needs with our donor searches. So I'm very excited to be part of this event, and um, let's get started. So I always want to start off with our webinar goals. We're going to start off with explaining the donor categories and the specimen types. We'll review the donor products, and then I'll also do a live donor search so you can see how to maneuver around our website. Then we're gonna do the donor selection services and then also discuss the resources. All right, so getting started. I have been, like I said, in the industry for almost 14 years, and I started off with customer service. And so that's a very important goal for me to help with all of our clients. And a number one question that most of our clients ask is like, just simply, how do I get started? And how do I look for a donor? So our biggest thing that we like to tell is simply just sit down, whether if it's by yourself or a loved one or your partner, to sit down and write down the characteristics that you feel like is very important to you. Things that you value in a person or things that you value in a family member. You know, sometimes it could be, you know, like physical characteristics. And, you know, everyone has their, you know, preference of what type of physical characteristics they like. Um, ethnic background, personality, education, and also, you know, a specific donor category. 
we actually have um, over 100, uh, 100 UK donors now. So um, it's a wide range of variety of the UK donors accepted. And so again, what I'll show you in our live donor search is that we'll narrow down um, a search uh, for your donors and you know simply see which one that is good for you. All right. So the important information that we're going to consider is the donor category and the specimen types. So we're going to start off with the donor category. So ID donors is um, UK specific. So ID donors are donors who have uh, donated within the program, and they basically are agreeing to release their identifying contact information when the donor conceived individual turns 18. Donor conceived individual means simply uh, like the donor's offspring or your adult children. It's just the new way of saying uh, offspring. So our DCIs are the only ones that will be able to retrieve the donor's information. We don't provide any of the information to the recipients. And also um, recipients will need to report their birth and also register the DCI so that they can obtain the contact information of the donor. Um, also in starting in March, 2020, Fairfax is started beginning accepting ID donors only. So moving forward, any donor that's in our program will be specifically ID. We do have um, donors that, um, sorry, <laughs> we do um, have other donors, but you know, UK is specifically for ID donors. We did this for the purpose of having DCIs having a chance to you know, be able to contact us in the future. And also that, you know, we're just trying to evolve in the industry. All right, so next topic we have specimen types. So we have three main specimen types, intracervical insemination, which is ICI prep, intrauterine insemination is the IUI prep, and assistive reproductive technology is ART. The ICI prep is a standard sample with at least 10 million modal sperm. This file is not washed. So if your medical professional doesn't have the capability of washing the specimen, then you would want to try to use the IUI file. The IUI vial is also 10 million modal sperm, but it's pre-washed prior to freezing the specimen. So the seminal fluid has been removed prior to the freezing process. And simply the medical professional will be able to unfreeze and thaw out the sperm and just use the specimen right away. Assisted reproductive technology is the ART which has at least 6 million modal sperm. The purpose of this file was to create this file for mostly for like IVF or ICSI procedures since you don't need as much sperm. However, if for some reason you are unable to use an ICI or regular IUI for an insemination, you can combine two ICI arts or two IUI arts for to make one specimen and one try. So those can also be combined as um, two for ones. All right, so let's go to so the vial preparation type. As I explained in the previous slide, we have the IUI, the ICI, and the ART. We have two other acronyms that is IVF, which is the in vitro fertilization. And then we have ICSI, which is the intracytoplasmic sperm insemination. IVF and ICSI is what procedures I was explaining pre previously, and that you can use the ART vials because like I said, that you don't need as much sperm for these two procedures. And most of the time, your clinic or medical professional will be able to wash the specimen prior to the procedure. 
If for some reason, like I said, if there are no ART files available, then you can use the ICI or the IUI file. Definitely ask your medical professional what they prefer and then see what types of files are available for the donor. If you're doing a less invasive procedure like the IUI, the in-office insemination, make sure that you talk to your medical professional and see if they do have the capability of washing sperm. If they don't have the capability, then the IUI vial type is the appropriate vial to be using for the procedure. IUI is basically your medical professional will insert the catheter through the uterus. And so that's why we need to make sure that the seminal fluid has been removed prior to the procedure. If they do have the capability of washing the specimens, then the ICI vial prep and the ICI um, ART is, will work perfectly fine for that procedure as well. All right. All right, so let's go into, so donor products, donor products and information. Fairfax Cryobank actually has a wide range of free products that you can use. And it's very helpful to, you know, narrowing down your donor search and seeing if these are the types of products that, you know, that you value and are important to you. So let's start with childhood photo. Simply what it says, it's childhood photo is a photo of the donor when they were probably a toddler or, or a child. The summary profile is a brief overview of the donor's medical history, family medical history, which can contain up to uh, three to four generations of uh, history. I say fourth generation because the some of their donors actually have their own children and that will be showing up on the summary profile and then you can see um, if they have children or not during the live donor search i'll show you an example also um, the brief overview of religion and updates donor updates will be like we do yearly annually updates for donors. So if anything comes up in the line of any like medical um, changes or uh, graduation, if they got their master's degree, any type of changes that they report to us will be in the summary profile. So next we got staff impressions. Staff impressions is simply what it says too. It's um, impressions from our staff members on site so we have six different sites uh, for Fairfax Cryobank. Um, like I said earlier, we, um, I'm located in Pasadena. We have Houston and Austin in Texas. We have our corporate office in Virginia. We have Philadelphia. And then we also have Roseville, Minnesota. So we have each staff member who's designated to do staff impressions, and it'll give you a brief summary of uh, the donor. Donor essay, we end up giving questions to the donor and they'll you know, write down their answers and we will post that, um, all their responses as well. Audio clips from donor and staff. So audio clips from donor, this one's just like a brief, maybe minute or a minute and a half um, a question. So you can actually hear the donor's voice and you can hear their responses to whatever particular question we're giving them. The staff will also verbally do their own impression so you can hear verbally. Sometimes you can hear the excitement or you know the different types of tones that from the staff member. So the medical profile is also a profile that shares the personal behaviors of the um, the donor and their history, the sexual history, donor history. Um, it sh will sometimes show if they have tattoos or piercings, and also the medical history is shown on there again. And so we have genetic testing summary. So. Any of our donors, especially if they've had an expanded panel, if they 
have uh, certain types of carriers it'll show on this report, as well as their full summary of what um, genetic panel they've done. Face match, which I'll introduce on the next slide, is um, a fun tool to use two facial images. And I'll go into that next one. So products for purchase, a personal profile is actually a very extensive profile, which also includes like the family info, the donor info, and any of like their personal um, well-being or their um, their likes of certain um, you know like, um, types of things that they like on there, or um, or their family, like or their occupations and it's a very long and extensive um, personal profile that they fill out. Uh, let's see, we have the silhouette is a, a blacked out side view of the donor so you can actually see what the donor side view looks like. Full audio interview. So what I explained with the audio clips, this is just the full length version. It can be like about 15 to 20 minutes. Personality type is just what it is, like personality type, they do a little test and they um, will get their results, you know, depending if maybe if they're introverts or extroverts, et cetera. Okay, so let's go. So what I mentioned in the previous slide, we have the Fairfax face match. So this is actually a pretty cool, um, tool to use if you want to use two facial images. So what you would do is upload a photo of your choosing, could be your partner, or it can be a celebrity, anybody who you want to choose. If you have a, a frontal view of a picture of the person you're uploading, and what it'll do is mathematical technology will compare the two facial images of the facial features, like, you know, like their face structure, or maybe their, like their facial, um, their nose structure, et cetera. Uh, and it'll give you, you know, like what the resemblance and upload uh, the different donor profiles. And it'll show you like just their children photo, but it'll give you um, all the different profiles of all the different uh, donors that pull up. Usually there's high, medium, and low, but don't be alarmed because most people have different face structures. So you might not be able to get high or medium. Sometimes it'll be low. And so, also, it doesn't um, identify with color. So there's a section in the box where you can choose a, if you want like the blue eyes or or a different hair color because that doesn't pull up. So yeah, we can look at that. All right, so our unlimited access packages. So like I mentioned, we have a lot of free products for you to look at, but if you wanna look at the basic access or the full access plans, we have unlimited access for 90 days to view all the donor products that's available with the check marks. So you'll end up getting a personal profile and silhouette for the basic access, and that'll be addition to the free products. And then the full access will be the full audio interview. And then also you'll get the personality type for some reason it got cut off, but personality type in, is included with that as well. Let's do the next slide. All right, so this is the time where I'm gonna do a live donor search. And then so I can show you where everything's located and uh, let's go over that. Let's see. All right, here we go. My view is gonna be a little opposite, so I won't be staring at the screen. All right, so this is a Fairfax Cryobanks UK specific website. Figured in the spirit of the European Facility Society, we'll go on to the UK website. You're going to click on donor search. So for the UK, 
the donor category is ID specific. So we can just leave that as is. Under the basic search, you can choose if you want, you know, the specific height, or you can do minimum or maximum, or you can choose any height. If you feel like you have an ancestry that you want to choose, Caucasian, Asian, Latino, Black, multi, you can click on that. Hair color, eye color, education. So education, graduate just means if they have like their master's degree or higher. Specimen type, this is what we discussed earlier about the different types of um, specimens. Um, if your doctor is open, you can just click, click on any available or just put all donors. So then click on advanced search. So donor brand, UK specific is um, caters to the Fairfax Cryobank. So you can just keep it as any or click on to Fairfax Cryobank. Ethnic background, you can click on any or you can scroll down to see there's um, you know, different genres or if you want something that's you know, um, specific. Sometimes, you know, depending on what our availability is for a donor, you can see if we do have the specific donors and sometimes, or you want to do more of a broad range. So I was thinking in the, in the spirit of European Fertility Society, I was going to just click on the European so we can narrow down the search category. So here we have, you can choose skin tone, the hair type, so CMV status, you'll definitely want to talk to your medical professional. Um, you know, don't be alarmed because if it says positive, it doesn't necessarily mean that the donor has an active infection. It just means that they have been exposed in the past where they have gained antibodies. So for that, it's important, especially if you're negative, some doctors require, some doctors don't. So it's very important to talk to your medical professional and see what their opinion is. You can also click on read more, and then it'll give you a very um, full detail of the CMV status. You can also do age, rage, positive pregnancies, Sometimes your medical professional will want you to have a positive pregnancy, especially if you're doing IVF or ICSI because you're spending a lot more money on that procedure. Sometimes they want to uh, see a positive pregnancy. However, sometimes if we have new donors, they might not have it because like I said, they're new donors. So also talk to your medical professional about the blood type and RH factor. All right, and so we're going to go into genetic testing search. So Fairfax Cryobank actually has an expanded genetic panel, and it's the latest one was um, 283 or more um, genetic diseases. So if you're interested in choosing expanded panel, you can click on this section. And then also if you want a donor, that's negative for all the expanded panel, which I believe is like, like less than 20%. But if that's your preference, you can click on that. If you also know that you are a carrier for genetic disease and you want to make sure that the donor uh, is negative for that, you can click on the select by genetic diseases tested negative. And then it will pop up all of the expanded panel that we have currently and you can look to see if you can you know find the one that you have if not then usually there's um <clears throat> excuse me that you can do um like a, a special test and we request that you can contact uh, global cs and ask them to uh see if that's available if you know um, you have a specific gene in mind that you want it to be negative, then you can also click on the uh, select the gene tested negative. So for now, I'll just pick for any. Oh, and forgot to mention that uh, we have an amazing genetic screening webinar on our Fairfax Cryobank 
website and it's done by our general counsel i'm sorry general genetic counsel counselor and she her name is suzanne seitz she's amazing and it, she goes from point a to b and explains everything into that webinar so highly recommend if you are interested in the genetic webinar to really check this out so now we have life style search you know, if you're interested in astrological signs or if you know you have a favorite subject that you want to relate to donor, you know, religion, favorite pet, personal goals and talents and hobbies. So I only chose one, which was the European ethnic background. So we're gonna just go ahead and press search. So you'll see that we have over 102 exact matches. I wanted to show you where if vials are available, you'll be able to see a check mark where it says yes. And if there's a phone symbol, that means that they have limited availability for that specimen type. So you'll want to call CS and then try to see if, you know, if there are vials available. If there is a bell, that means that there are no units currently available. So let's go and you can scroll down on the different times. So I'm gonna click on donor 6426. Once you click onto the profile, you'll be able to see the first thing that pops up Add a bonus, this donor has expanded genetic testing. So this means that this donor has had the 283 plus uh, genetic screen panel. And then, so this is where I mentioned where the summary profile, if you download, it'll pull up all of your, inform, the donor's information of medical, family, medical history, and then you can see like his father, he looks like he has brothers and where he says sons. So he looks like he has two children, everyone healthy and you know, the mother's father. So like I said, there's three to four generations. You know, you have his uh, parents, um, his, um, his generation, uh, which you know, can include his siblings and also, um, you know, uncles, aunts, and then like I said, um, children if there is available children for the donor and all the way to the bottom this is where you'll see updates to profile so if there was any family medical history that's changed or personal or his own medical or even um like i said like if um he went back to school and got a, a graduate's degree etc any any types of updates that they report to us this is where it will be all right, so now let's go back to, here's the staff impressions. So for example, you download, it'll give you physical appearance and personality uh, impressions from the staff. And then here's the donor essays. Here's like the essay questions, um, you know, childhood experience, um, if you wanted to travel, it looks like he wants to, you know, travel to Europe. So you can read all of those and you can actually um, download as a PDF too for if you want to keep it for your reference. So, and then here is like the brief audio clip and um, I, I won't play it now, but this is just the brief audio clip and then the staff comments. And then here's also the medical profile that I mentioned earlier. And so this is where you'll see all the information and then along with the family medical again. Here you'll see the genetic testing summary. So this is where you will be able to see um, what you know his carrier status is and also everything else that he's been tested for. So once you see, so he is a non, he has one carrier and the rest looks pretty good. And it'll show you right here on the report itself, what he's positive for. 
and then it looks like he's negative for all the other genes that were tested. And it's a full lengthy report. So it's a good thing to, if you're interested in a specific donor, to uh, print that out and have that for your reference as well. All right. And then so since he is a carrier, we have one carrier screen. It'll pull up here. And then so if you are interested in using that, like say, for example, this donor, it'll give you what we we're advising you, what the carrier status is. And then you can simply sign off on it and then um, purchase the donor. All right. And so down below what we mentioned of the products that are uh, for sale, uh, you got the personal profile, you have the childhood photo, which is for free as well. You can download that, the silhouette, the full audio uh, with the donor, and then also the partial profile where it's, um, it'll provide you all of this information if you click over the question mark, and then also the complete profile for purchase, and then the personality type. If you are interested in choosing the basic access or fold, you can actually click on here as well. And so here's the all of the basic overview. He does have a reported pregnancy, so it'll give you at least that. Um, we don't have uh, the specific numbers, but it will show you that there is a reported pregnancy for your reference. And then the vial is available here. So all of that is included for your donor search. And like I said, if you, you know, always want to look for you know, multiple donors, you know, you want to have a, a back plan just depending on, you know, the vial type and what uh, the specimen types are available. All right, let's see what we got next. So we will view that. All right, so I'm going to go back to our screen over here. And presentation, okay. Okay, so our next is our do, uh, donor selection services. And you can contact our, I'll give you the email later, but it's global at fairfaxcryobank.com and that you can contact our international team and they will be able to help you. And so if you are interested in photo match, you can see that you will provide a photo and you can provide up to eight donors that you're interested and they'll give your opinion on what, if you wanna have a comparison of what the photos that we have in-house specifically. So we won't provide the in-house uh, photos of the adults, but at least that we can give you the opinions and, and client services is amazing and they will help you from point A to B to make sure that all of your questions are answered and give you your opinion um, if you want their opinion. And you can also do a photo with the types of characteristics and what type of criteria you want as a donor. So um, if you're unsure and you know you just want this specific, I want blue eyes, which one has blue eyes out of this? They'll help you. So in the selection consultation, it's simply, it's, it's not a formal um, counseling session anymore. It's basically, if you wanna call them, uh, we do have the 0800 number or the email address and you can contact them and ask any question and they will be able to help you. All right. All right. So this is very exciting for our, our shipping processes. So we do have a hub in Manchester and we are able to ship to anywhere within the UK. And uh, I believe it's uh, about $230 USD pricing. So if you have a clinic that you wanna ship within the UK, we are um, able to do so. If for some reason, um, if you're like Europe outside of UK, we can also ship internationally. You just have to contact our global CS and they will be able to um, help you with the whole shipping process. 
And then, so now we have the UK family limits. So we really strictly comply with the international and UK family limits. The best part of Fairfax is that we do not charge for family slots, unlike other cryobanks. So this is a major added benefit for anyone who wants to um, be put onto the family slot as the UK regulations is for 10 families. And so uh, I strongly agree, like if you want to uh, have a family slot, contact our Global CS and they will be happy to help you with that. And it's very important too, so before you do the shipping, you will want to uh, go onto our Fairfax website and you can actually go over to resources and then there's like terms of use. So you have to fill out the terms of use before you can place the order. So once that's been completed, then you can contact CS and then they will be able to help you with placing the order or whatever steps you are um, needing help with. Uh, let's see, we have also for the UK family, it's very important that you do report your pregnancies and births. So definitely report your pregnancies. That will consider one of the family slots. And then once you give birth, we do, you know, have you contact us and uh, report that birth as well. So we do need that follow up because we do base off of births. All right. And the best part is that too, you can also go on to our contact information where it says pregnancy form, your clinic or yourself can electronically report the birth because the account number that you will have specifically uh, related to you, you will enter that account number and it will automatically find your um, your distributions or, or your the or when you got pregnant and so it'll give you that account number sorry <laughs> um, you will look for your add your account number and it will actually you know be able to find you and then our client services will be able to detect when uh, your vials were distributed and your you know your pregnancy information and then we'll have that recorded all right let's see what we got next So we have resources. So our resources, um, Fairfax has a blog where it has all the past webinars that we've done. And then we've also done uh, guest bloggers, uh, there's testimonials. Uh, the two webinars that I do highly recommend that I did uh, mention the genetic testing and the genetic screening, that's from Suzanne Seitz, she's our general uh, counselor, genetic counselor, sorry. And um, and then also another popular one is for the donor screening. So there is a webinar, a very extensive webinar and comprehensive webinar that will go over the donor screening as well. And then so Fairfax newsletter. The newsletter is basically um, you sign up for the newsletter and then you can get uh, notifications for new donors that's been added to the website. Uh, there's promo codes and gift codes, etc. Family forum is uh, basically where you can connect either with other families or you can, you know, add your questions on there, see if anybody can relate to certain questions you have. There's a video that's provided, an intro video. So if you click on that and you'll be able to get a general idea of what to do on there. All right. So choosing your donor and placing your order. So hopefully you have a little bit more insight of uh, how to choose your donor. And so down here on the bottom, the client service contact information is a 0800 number. If you're able to call in and then they can help you with, like I said, any kind of questions you have, any um, ordering process, et cetera. If you feel more comfortable, you can also do our international email, which is the global at fairfaxcryobank.com. And uh, we do have our international team that will be able to help you with the specifics. Okay. All right. So before we go into anything here, so we have 
An exclusive, <laughs> exclusive savings for the webinar attendees. So $149 off of the full unlimited access plan. Basically, you're getting it for free. So I highly recommend you um, taking advantage of this promo code. So my IVF answers 2022, and you have until January of next year. So that's a great long time for you to go ahead and, and try to um, add that into your promo code. If you're checking out the donors, that's when you can enter it and add the promo code and it'll give you the discount. So, and that's it for me today. Um, before we go in the Q&A, I just wanna say um, thank you so much for letting me be a part of this. This is so amazing for me to be in this journey with all of you. Um, and that being said, if I'm unable to answer any of like your medical types of questions, I'll be happy to give you my uh, contact information and my email address, and I will either get the answers for you or I will designate you to the appropriate person that can help you with that info. But um, yeah, and that's it for me. <laughs> so much christina it has been very very interesting thank you. thanking us through the donor search definitely interesting and informative uh, and i'm already very happy that uh, we were able to share this all information with all of you of course and now your favorite part for sure um <laughs> you know, q a session is starting right now so if you have any questions go ahead but of course as christina mentioned uh you can always you will be able to get in touch with her directly mm -hmm. uh, if there are some other things you would to would like to know of course we are always able to forward this to christina her team and we will try to get some answers for you but right now i guess it's time for the q a christina ready for it all right let's do it yes let's go <laughs> ahead then of course here's the first question um let's have a look so derek has the first question under specimen prep do you test dfi the condensation rates are you able so to i that? actually don't know this answer but i will get someone to answer this for you i'm not very familiar with the dfi but i do sure. have our lab directors that are so we okay. can put that on the side and i'll make sure i get that information for you not a problem at all of course i will save this as well for uh so i will be able to forward this not a problem at all thanks so okay. much Okay, let's have a look. So for an IUI, can we combine two IUIs vials at once? You can. Um, if you use a regular IUI vial, that's sufficient enough for one attempt. Uh, sometimes we do have clients that are doing two inseminations in one cycle. So then that would be when you use two different IUI vials. Um, we Either we'll have you, you know, well, we don't have you, but your medical professional, depending on what your cycle is and the time frame of when they want you to do the insemination, then you can use the one IUI vial for the first try and then the second one for the second try in the same cycle. But most of, um, a lot of our clients just gets one vial. Thank you for the for, for the oh, second question for here, Patricia. Question. And uh, of course, thank you for your help with that. Um, okay, Louise has another question. Not sure if you can answer, but let me read it. If you have IVF with donor sperm and the embryos didn't develop well, is it worth doing another round of IVF, or would it be better to try a different donor? So we've actually had instances with uh, recipients um, asking this question. It's a very good question. Um, we leave it up to your medical professional who is performing the IVF procedure. They will determine whether if, like I said, if a donor had a pregnancy, so at least there was um, success in the past. So we know that the donor is able, you know, to have pregnancies. And so if you, it, it's more of your preference if you want to switch donors or not. Um, it, like we said, we, we leave this for your medical professional. Sometimes if if the first one fails, they'll, you know, let's try um, a second try. If for some reason the second one fails, maybe then that is an option if you want to switch different donors. But we do leave it to your medical professional to give you that advice. That's understandable. Thank you so much indeed for yet another question here. Uh, Lisa has one more. Any information of how many sales of specific donors or potential children 
any information of how many sales? Um, Some? We, yeah, <laughs> it's a little, it's a, a very broad uh, question um, because there's so many different donors. Some of them might have a lot of sales. And so when you look onto the donor search, that's where you can see if there's like, you know, limited availability for the uh, specimen types or if there's um, many uh, file types, you can contact our CS Global International team and they will be able, you know, to give you a little bit more specifics as, you know, if donors are still actively donating or if they've retired and then, you know, with their vial availability as well. And then also with like the pregnancies. Mm -hmm. Okay, understood again. Thank you for that as well. <laughs> Thank you. <Lisa>. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> sure. And how do you guarantee face match outside of the chi square? So she, so face match. Um, oh, I should have done a quick. I don't know if I'm able to show a screen. Am I able to show that one again? Yeah. Here? Yes. Let let's do it. it All right. I'm gonna give you this right here. Oh, perfect. So once you. We're going to start the donor search again. At the very bottom, you can see where it says face match and you can upload a photo. This is where it shows that, you know, eye color and hair color is an added uh, tool because it doesn't recognize color. Face match, like I mentioned, it's basically you have um, the high mediums and lows and not all the time it's high medium lows but the technology that it has it tries to measure the type of facial shape so it will be able to match as best as as it can so like if i use for example we'll use a, a picture i have and we can and then you choose the file and then you press search it will use all of the internal donors, the adult photos, pictures, because we kind of have um, the donor photos, like it's medically inclined, where we, you know, we show their face, we have like very close facial features, excuse me, and, um, you know, body type, etc. So this will try to recognize the same facial shape of what the close up is of what the donors that we have. So, you know, it like mine is, for instance, mine's low. I don't have anything that's a high recognition, but um, this is what it will, you know, it will grab the adult photos that we have internally. Hope that kind of answered a little bit. <laughs> yes, of course. Thank you so much. Indeed, definitely interesting to see um, how it works. And uh, okay. let me go just... <laughs> Yes, of course, it's right here. Okay, uh, if you can help with this question, I picked my sperm donor. It was only a baby photo at audio set non ID. Mm -hmm. So, um, good question, Ashley, because um, if within the uh, within Europe, there's different inter uh, international regulations. So you may be able to choose a non ID donor. Um, Non-ID donors are specific to that they are participating in the program, but they um, are not willing to release their identifying contact information when the donor conceived individual turns 18. So that's what non-ID donors are. But um, most of the time, non-ID donors will most likely have just like a childhood photo, but no and anything um, upon that. Thank you for the clarification to this one as well. And how important is to make a genetic match between a sperm donor to the egg? So for the genetic match, so for a sperm donor, this is a good question for a genetic counselor. Um, she can answer all of our you know, genetic uh, information on specifically with relating to sperm and egg. Um, if you know you're a known carrier, then doing a donor search with that specific carrier screening and making sure that he's negative, then that would be a good thing for you to do if you actually know that. Um, 
I will get that question if specifically and I'll send that to the right person and I'll get that more in detail for you. Of course, thank you so much. And I already <laughs> saved the question, so I would be able to uh, send it to you, of course. All right, and I picked a donor where there is no sample available, shall I contact for further notice? So if he is on the website still and he doesn't have any vials available, you can call constantly or you can email and see if they're available or we do have like donor notification email so if you're signed up with fairfax um, you will be able to get um, a notification email it doesn't guarantee the vial availability but they will send when vials have been released for that donor so it's really important you just contact our global cs and they can actually um, give you that information if there are vials or um, Hopefully, maybe if there's, you know, if he's active, then we just have to follow our FDA regulations. And once we are able to uh, release files, if everything comes out clear and um, it's been in quarantine for more than 180 days, then um, everything's cleared. We constantly look at inventory to see if we can release additional information. And so once we're able to clear the infectious disease testing and um, it's been more than 180 days, uh, we'll try to constantly look, at, like I said, look at the inventory if we are able to release additional vials. All right. Again, great question. Thank you for that. Um, any place in California Bay Area for on-site consultation? Unfortunately, we don't have our Bay Area location anymore. Everything has been consolidated to our Pasadena location. All right. Thank you. But we can verbally, like we can also um, talk over the phone if you have any questions. We also have a client service representative representative on site here in Pasadena and we can um, you know talk to you if you have other questions as well mm -hmm. okay thank you for that and how uh, sorry we had this question before and let me just go to the uh, next question okay so why is it important to have washed sperm in the IUI process in the IUI process so IUI process the sperm needs to have the seminal fluid removed from the sperm before injecting with a catheter directly through the uterus. Um, less medical terms is that um, there can be infections created if the seminal fluid has not been removed. Because if you're injecting it through the vagina, through the cervix, and directly into the uterus, that is we used to tell our old patients that like um, the cervix is just like a, like a natural wash for, you know, for ICI files. So if you're using an ICI file and you're skipping the process of the cervix and going directly through the u uterus, um, infections can, you know, happen. So we do recommend having an IUI because the seminal fluid has been removed prior to the freezing process that you're able to thaw out, well, your medical professional um, will be able to thaw the vial out per our protocols, and then they will be able to just complete the procedure. I hope that answered. <laughs> Thank you, Elizabeth. <laughs> Oops, I lost the... Um, you're, I can't hear you, Caroline. <laughs> Sorry, I'm right here, of course. Apologies. I'm right here, and now I think you can hear me. My mistake. I just forgot to <laughs> switch it back. Uh, but of course, not, nothing happened. I'm right here. So let's have a look at this question. So for IVF, do you have to choose an IVF-specific vial? Again, we asked your medical professional, but IVF, um, depending on what IVF if you're doing, um, I feel like they've been leaning towards more of the ICSI IVF where you can inject the sperm directly into the egg. So you don't need as much sperm and that's why we recommend with the ART vials. It's, um, it costs less, you know, it's cost effective, especially when spending money for IVF procedures. So, and it, you have at least 6 million sperm. 
So if you're doing IVF, like I said, that you don't need as much sperm as that you would need for a regular IUI insemination. If for some reason the donor doesn't have any ART vials, you can simply use the regular ICI or even an IUI vial. Makes sense, of course. Thank you so much for yet another interesting question. Thank you for the clarification. And as you can see, there are some thank yous for, uh, for helping hey, out oh with questions. Thank right? you. <laughs> so, thank you so much indeed. Um, there are a few questions left. We will be slowly finishing. So if you have more, this will be the final call. Go ahead, type those in. And so can you explain what is CMV plus minus? Plus minus, okay, yes. So the CMV, and it's a little tricky, but what we do is um, positive means, so we do an IgG testing and IgM testing. So IgG is what they've been exposed to in the past. So it's technically like a, a flu-like symptoms. Of, it's kind of like the like chicken pox uh, family, um, but majority of everyone a lot of people have been exposed to cmv and so what it'll do is that the antibodies the igg will appear on the test and so igm is specifically for active infections so if the donor has um, a positive igm test and it says okay the igm is positive then we're going to destroy all of those vials that were related to that uh, testing date and um, the specimens dates too. And we go back also um, the previous specimen date to just verify to make sure too if there's no active infections. So once there's an active infections, those are discarded right away. We do not sell any IgM positive vials. We also do a CMV mat, which is also very similar to the IgG, but it's semen. So the IgG and IgM is uh, virology. We do that through blood. And then the, I, um, the CMV mat, we actually have our own lab on our, our parent company at GIVF. They're called um, MIDL. It's a molecular infectious disease lab, they are the ones that will um, determine whether if there was any um, CMV located in the semen. And if for some reason that is positive, then we will also do a discard and uh, we'll, you know, go to the prior specimen date and discard anything that has um, any active infections. I hope I explained that okay. <laughs> Thank you so much indeed for the explanation, of course, definitely helpful. Now it's all clear to everyone, I think. <laughs> so thanks a lot. <laughs> and let's have a look. Uh, so how about this one? Should you choose someone with the same blood type? There's a lot of questions related to that. Um, obviously, many of us um, or anybody who has a partner or, you know, a loved one or anybody, um, they don't necessarily have the same blood type. Sometimes we, we do ask you to ask your medical professional because they will give you the actual advice on that because um, they might have a preference for you. So we don't wanna like overstep the boundaries of what their decision is for you. Thank you, indeed, yeah. again. And let me have a look at this one. So how many vials should each person purchase? So this is a really good question too. Um, depending on what you wanna do or what type of procedure you um, wanna do, um, again, ask your medical professional what they recommend, but uh, one vial equals one procedure. So if you are interested in having future children, I highly recommend that you are, you know, if by all means, if you are able to purchase more than one, um, or several, then we do have a storage, uh, a storage account where you can keep all of your vials here in our office. And most of our, well, all of our storage or vial specimens are located in our corporate office in Virginia. And um, 
for some reason, if some people, we've had people come over to California and they wanna do procedures in our state, they can ship out those vials to our location and we can also store them here. So for international, you can contact the global CES as well. And then you can talk about the different options if you want to purchase more than one. So it's it's up to you whether you want to purchase one or six. And, you know, it, but we do have the storage capability and we can keep those there until you are ready to um, ship out. Mm -hmm. And okay. while we are on this topic, Next okay. question is, is it wise to purchase two vials even for one procedure in case the first one doesn't go properly? It's um, if you're doing IVF, in my experience in the past, a lot of medical professionals will ask for two vials. They've always asked um, for a backup vial just in case if something happens in their lab. Um, we do have our own thawing uh, protocols. So what we'll have, you know, we'll show the paperwork to the laboratory where you're located at, and they will follow the thaw protocols. And our, um, if it's an ICI vial, they'll also have um, protocols, you know, on how to process that vial. So it's um, it's up to you again. Medical professionals are the ones that will advise you if they want one or two. Um, many people have sent one, and um, so it, it just depends on what your uh, lab recommends. All right. Thank you for the question, Elizabeth, here as well. Um, okay, and how long ahead, sorry, can I reserve a sample pay in advance, use later? So reserving a sample, uh, once you go to our website and then under resources, you can uh, click on the terms of use. And so that's basically the agreement of um, purchasing sperm and, you know, all the other types of agreements that come along with that. Um, once you're done with that, and then that's been given to, we usually say about 24, 48 hours, uh, depending on uh, our global CS team. And you can contact right away and set up a uh, shipping or you know order vials or if you just want it for storage it, 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 you can the process is up to you on how fast you want to take care of it i i believe on uh, like you know the weekends were only like a i think saturday is like a half day so um but monday through friday they're available and they can definitely get that order to you right away paying in advance um is basically yeah you would you would pay for the specimen in advance and then use All right. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for uh, again answering this one. And actually, Leticia would like to see the first uh, slide. I'm not sure. Uh, let Let's go to the All presentation. Right. <laughs> um, and Leticia, can you tell us? So you want to see the first slide? You mean this one? Just to make sure, because I'm not sure. So please let us know. And she is writing, I think. Okay. <laughs> Let's give it a second, okay? And if you can just let us know which one. I just also want to mention that it's actually being recorded. So if you would like to have a look at this, it will be available also on our YouTube channel and our website, uh, how to search for a donor. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Christina, so how to search for a donor, this was what to look for, which one was this? Let me oh, see. so the, the how to search the donor part. Okay, let me share the screening. Is there a specific question or you just want to see what it looks like? What to look for? Mm -hmm. If you can show us once again, okay. yeah, I think it's we still have sure. time to to do that. So let's let's go ahead. Okay. So back here, uh, depending, we, you know, we do, do have different locations. So if you reside um, outside the UK area, you can also go to the U USA or, um, you know, dif depending on where you're located, you can um, click on it. Ooh, oh, because I already have it on the UK. So you click on that and then you go to like the donor search. And you, once you click on donor search, it'll automatically pull up this information and when you can start doing your donor search. So in here, this is where it will show you all of the basic information right here. 
is the advanced search. So you can choose any of these mm -hmm. options. And then genetic testing search. You can, this is where I suddenly, if you um, want expanded panel or, um, or if you have a specific genetic um, disease testing that you wanna click on and look for, you can click on this option as well. And it'll give you all of our inherited diseases here. And you can also type it in here as well if you have um, a certain one that you're looking for. And then um, lifetime search. And then once you've clicked on your preferences, then you can just press search and then it'll pop up all the donors that are available with the UK and this um, UK specific. All right, thank you so much. And also one more thing, because uh, Tisha has added, it was what we should consider while making a list. Do you remember which slide that was? Oh, and then making so a can... list, yes, yeah. of course. Mm -hmm. Because very... I don't exactly remember, so let's find Getting it. started. Yes. Mm -hmm. So right. those are the important uh, things that you need to look at. Okay, yes. Leticia, I hope that is the one. Um, and I hope that was helpful. But as I mentioned, remember, it will, we will be able, you will be able to watch it. Uh, thank you so much for uh, for your question. And of course, there's a uh, thank you from Tizia uh, for you, Christina. Thank you, thank you so much for showing this again. again. <laughs> sure. Yeah, it's always nice to uh, be able to, you know, I, you will remember. We will remember it better for sure. <laughs> Thanks so much. Okay. Um, Sebastian has one more question, I believe, here. So, yes, here it is. Is it normal that three and not one vials are utilized for donor IUI? For three, um, we, we never, I don't think, I mean, unless it's definitely your preference, um, but we don't really use three vials uh, for um, a donor IUI, unless um, you're using the ART vial, then you'll want to use two of those to combine into for um, 10 plus uh, modal sperm, because our regular ICIs and IUIs have 10 million modal sperm, and then the ART has the 6 million modal sperm. So you can combine those two to create for one try. All right. I hope that was helpful, Sebastian. Thank you so much. And there is a very short question here from Francesca. Why do you wait 180 days? 180 days is our FDA, our Food Drug Administration, that we abide by all the requirements. And 180 days from the date of the donor making the specimen. So if he made a donation date today, we can't release the vial until 180 days after. So that's why sometimes like if the donor availability is either limited or um, there's none available and the donor is still active, then we would wait for that you know, period. And we actually do additional 90 day testing um, or infectious disease testing. Uh, just to make sure, you know, like we once we wait 180 days, we know that prior to that, that the infectious disease has been cleared. Um, obviously, after the 180 days, we'll do another uh, physical and as well as the infectious disease testing. If everything looks good, then we can, excuse me, <laughs> we can do, um, we will do another optional testing or we do every three months after um, so the donors are constantly doing infectious disease testings and, and follow-ups. And so, but that's the 180 days is an FDA regulation. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Thank you for the clarification. Thank you for the question. Definitely uh, good <laughs> to know you, that as well. Okay. One more question from Maria here. If you choose a donor with no limited availability, how long to wait until it is available again? So that kind of... Um, ties in with the previous question that I was mm -hmm. mentioning about like the 180 days um, always call or you can email you know if you want to check it in and check to see if the donor has any availability uh, it, that's the best method of way to try to you know see if there is any files available um, you can check the website constantly to see if he um, has any uh, 
any additional vials available. And like I said, um, donors who are active, maybe if they're inactive and they're not donating anymore, then that's the best time to call to see if anybody has released any files or um, see what the availability is. If they are active, um, like I was mentioning in the previous question, uh, vials have to be in quarantine for at least 180 days. And so we sometimes if we see inventory, oh, there's going to be more inventory. Um, we're constantly looking at that. Our, our um, directors are constantly looking at that. And if there's um, a demand, you know, we might do like an optional testing so we can release more vials out. Nothing's guaranteed. So, you know, sometimes, you know, maybe if for some reason the donor that you wanted and didn't pass the clearance, then we can't release those files. So we just make sure and let you know that nothing is guaranteed. No, of course, that's that's how it <laughs> works. Thank you. Thank you so much indeed. Okay. And well, we might be looking at our final question for tonight. So let's have a look. Lisa has one. Do you have experienced medical professionals showed good record through cooperation to recommend for clinic? So for um, medical professionals, we don't have anyone um, specifically that we um, we can recommend for a clinic, but we would be happy to help you depending. Um, I don't know if like if you're international, we, we don't really have like someone specific, but maybe I can talk to someone that maybe that might have a, a lead or somebody that can recommend uh, for the US. Uh, we distribute everywhere within the U.S. as well. Um, sometimes, I mean, if you know, if like for California, I'm more, you know, um, I know a lot of clinics in California, so I can actually recommend. Um, our other sites might know, uh, depending what clinics, you know, that they might be able to recommend. But as far as international goes, I, I think that, like, contacting the global CS and, and maybe that they, they might have a little bit more insight of where we've distributed in the past. So that maybe that you can um, contact one of those too as well. Thank you so much. Of course, Lisa as well for your question. Christina, uh, thank you so much for answering all the questions. As I mentioned, it's, it was our final one. And as you can see, there are some thank yous already thank coming you. up for you. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. <laughs> it's It's been great to have you here indeed. I do hope that we will be able to do it sometime soon as well. Uh, yes, there are so many yeah. topics we could discuss for sure. And there are so many questions still, I'm sure that we, we can um, like handle, said, right? I'm, <laughs> I'm available to, um, especially with those other questions I couldn't answer. Um, I'll work with Caroline and, and you know, we can um, get that answer. I have them saved, well. of course, so I would be happy to forward those Perfect. so everyone will get an answer uh, from yeah. you and your team directly. I'm sure it's not a problem. So uh, thank you, everyone, for joining. And uh, wherever you are, if it's, uh, you <laughs> know, you. if it's it morning, <laughs> then have a lovely day. And if it's an evening, just like me here, so uh, have a lovely evening. Thank you for joining. I believe that was helpful for you. Uh, Christina, it's been a great pleasure thank to, you. to oh have my you gosh. as a presenter. Pleasure to do this. Thank you. <laughs> and as I've mentioned, and well, I just want to say that, of course, it has been recorded. You will have a chance to watch this again. Oh, and I will show you a link. And as you can see, Christina, more thank you for uh, coming up. Thank you so way. much, everyone. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. I'm very, very thankful. Thank you. <laughs> Glad to hear this. And if you go to my Abby fans, uh, sorry, if you go to my Abby <laughs> website, you know that there are more events coming up so go ahead sign up uh, all the events are free so you can just join ask your questions there are so many of our experts that will be happy to help you out uh, so yeah thank you so much thank, thank you take so care much. everyone and i will Hi. see you very soon take care. i hope Christina, too. <laughs> take care bye bye, bye. thank you Caroline. <laughs>